Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Armitan Tadpole. I built mine with these RCN Power Tool before, 5000 kV motors. Emacs Avon 2.5 inch tri-blade pro. Diatone F411 flight stack with an F4 flight controller. 13 amp ESE with a 15 amp burst. Runcam Racer Nano 2. VTX is the Ishii Nano. Stock, you can only use the 16 by 16 flight stack, but you pair these two holes with an adapter plate and you can use a whoop type board. Bottom plate looks to be two millimeters thick. Top plate is 1.5 millimeters thick. Motor post to motor post, I'm getting about 119 millimeters. Mine weighs just about 74 and a half grams. I flew it on GNB 3S, 520 milliamp batteries, which brings the weight up to 116.69 grams. So we got a pretty nice day here, just a calm, steady breeze. I am running that run cam racer, the Nano 2. And I, this is a camera that I think when you watch back the DVR, I, my opinion is I like flying with it. It feels like, I just feel like I can see better with it. Maybe it's the sharpness and contrast settings on it. But when I watch back the DVR, it doesn't look as good to me. So that's that's one thing about this camera. Also, my video reception wasn't very good. Actually, I changed out the Ishii Nano VTX for a new one and my video reception didn't get any better. I am flying with different goggles, but I'm using the rapid fire module. You may notice another difference because the DVR is a bit different. The new uh, FPV goggles are the FPV-1 Orca. And uh, so far I've been liking those just fine, but I'm a little bit cu curious about my reception here. And that's something I wanted to throw out. The Armitan Tadpole, it's been around a while, so I suspect more than a few of you built these. And I'm wondering if this particular layout with a uh, linear antenna running out the back with those metal bits, if that is what's causing uh, the excess breakup. Because typically I get very good reception in the backyard with the cheapest and worst of VTX. Well, I shouldn't say that. With a majority of VTXs, I get really good reception. In this particular case, I'm just seeing a lot more breakup than I typically do. I noticed it in the goggles as well. I was kind of thinking maybe it was my head position because I've been so used to flying uh, Skyzone goggles and they have an antenna on each side. Whereas now when I'm back to the rapid fire, rapid fire, the antennas are both on one side. So that may be some differences that you see here. And we're going to see the low voltage warning come up a little bit. Now, some people, and, and I appreciate it, uh, suggested going 1103 on this. And I can't see there's anything wrong with that. And I actually thought about ditching the motors and trying something else. But I also wanted to see about what I could find out about these motors. Because RNC power motors are not some of my favorite motors. They tend to be battery hungry motors. And we see we've got, we've got the low battery voltage warning on screen. And stay with me here, but we're going to ride this out and you'll find at the end of the flight that we do come down right at about 3.5 volts uh, per cell, which is where we want to end. Now my camera angle isn't as high as it typically is. I'm not flying as fast. This is more of a freestyle sort of, uh, just go out and have fun. Of course you can make it a racer, but you're probably gonna need to use much different motors. And I think at this point, I'm kind of done with RCN motors. Uh, they may make but motors that work out really well for five inch quads. But the two or three times I've tried them for micros, they just haven't been very efficient. Um, in this particular case, I am going to get close to a three minute flight. And I could change my uh, low battery voltage setting to where it's not so annoying. And that's what I would encourage you to do. Uh, but you see as we come in here for the landing, that the battery starts to recover as I back off the throttle a little bit. And then when we disarm, go back to the home screen, we can see that we get back to 3.53 volts per cell. So the battery's in good shape and we still got almost three minutes of flight. So I'm gonna have a little footage running up there. This was just kind of a flight that I did just at random and I wasn't recording the audio to it and I was just actually kind of farting around and I thought I would show that to you as well because that flight comes in at over three minutes and 30 seconds. I think I run a touch long on the end voltage to where maybe I should have uh, come in a touch earlier but it's another sample that you know flight time is a big variable. I can with these motors and the same battery I could crank up the camera angle and kill the battery in about a minute and 20 seconds if I choose to uh, but so that's just another point that these motors while they're pretty and I like pretty motors just like anybody does um, they're just not very efficient and I really struggled to find a prop that was a fit could bring out whatever efficiency I could uh, the reason why I didn't go to different motors was I wanted to save some of that money of the channel money that I could use for some of those fun guessing game giveaways that I do have another one coming up should be coming up in the next couple days but I tell you work from home has been kicking my tail it is far more 
energy requiring than I expected. Maybe it's because I've got three kids in the house too, and you know you're having to cook meals and you've got to you know manage that those things. But it just feels like you go from one thing to another, and I've been mentally pretty tired in the evening. So that that's part of the reason why there's been fewer videos coming out uh, is I've just been tired in the evening. But we got uh, I got a little nap in, a little daddy nap between putting the kids to bed. So I thought I'd record this tonight. Hopefully get it out in the next day or two. Uh, so one of the other th interesting things about this is if you look at this top plate, they've actually got spots to where you could run two battery straps and so you can secure your battery down. I, I think if you do a lot of heavy crashing or you take a big risk in your freestyle flight, maybe if you go fly around uh, buildings or something of that nature where you definitely don't want your battery coming undone, two straps might be useful. Uh, what I did was I just left my lead long enough to where my battery leads, I would just kind of wrap them around this edge and I'd have them underneath my front strap and then I would plug them in. And my battery never went anywhere. I didn't have any problems and I only used the one up front. But notice that it's also kind of slanted. That's an interesting take on quad frame design. But I also wanted to ask about what you guys think about that video reception and if it's, you know, maybe I need a circular polarized back here and this metal is causing problems being so close. I don't know. I'm just, I'm guesstimating there because like I said, I switched out the VTX. My reception didn't get any better. I pumped up the milliwatts from 25 watts, from 25 milliwatts to uh, 200. My video reception didn't get all that much better. Uh, I just was disappointed in that. And I'm, I know somebody's going to say, well, just use a better VTX. Well, I understand, but I've used the Nano Ishin, the Ishin Nano, excuse me, a number of times and gotten way better video reception. That's why I'm kind of thinking it has something to do with this metal back here. Also, I used a zip tie to go around my receiver. And then I used this little space in here with another zip tie to create some slack for my battery leads. You can see they're kind of got a little wrinkle in there so that the uh, battery, if it were to get ejected and tugged on, it definitely wouldn't pull off of my stack. Uh, you take a look at my camera angle there. It's still fairly steep. I know it's really hard to see because the props really line up with that. But yeah, this is... Uh, let's see if I can get my finger straight here. This would be my camera angle, I think. So whatever that is, maybe 35 degrees instead of 40 or 45, which I normally fly. So my camera angle isn't as high in order to get three minutes of flight. And I kind of thought that was more fitting for this style of frame. I think if you're going to go for a racing micro frame, you probably want something with a little bit different design. Now, my understanding is this metal design up here, this whatever, if this is anodized aluminum or whatever this is, is relatively tough. I didn't center anything in my flights with it, so I can't respond to how tough this might be you can see there where the, the very top edge of the camera could possibly be uh, come in contact with something or if you go even higher more that top edge of the camera so when you're flying you could still take some damage but the cage does provide a little bit of protection and it does make it nice and neat as well as far as the stiffness of the frame you know you can see it flex it's not all that stiff and we look at the carbon layout here We've got that cross-hatching people like to talk about. I didn't notice anything in flight. I thought it flew fine. Armitan's known for having a lifetime warranty on their frames. So make up your own mind on what you think of their carbon and how they're cutting it. We've got a, a little serial number printed right under the carbon down here so they know which one you've got. So if, if, if you like Armitan carbon, you're probably all in. If you don't, then you're probably not. I also use some of my favorite Emacs tape. I'm calling it Emacs tape, but it's probably got some other official name. It's probably got a number that actually represents it. Then I used a little bit of heat shrink on my antennas and my zip ties to get my antennas nice and out of the way, keep them out of the harm's way. But a nice little fun freestyle frame. It is different when you fly a top-mounted battery. I can't say that this slant on the back does anything for us as far as the feel of the flight. Uh, but it is an interesting take on quad design. I'll put a list of the parts that I used. Again, you know, these motors have good power, but if you try to run them on other props, most of the other two and a half inch props I tried, I think all of them, or at least most of them, except for some new ones that have just come out, these were the most efficient and still flew well. Um, and Emacs does make a well-balanced and pretty good prop, so that's not surprising there, but I tried to fly a couple of HQs, a couple of gym fans, and they just all ate batteries. And this was the best prop for this motor at this weight on this quad.
but I'll have that parts list down below if you're interested in the different parts. Uh, things are kind of hard to get a hold of. I noticed the other day when we were doing the orders for the Mobilas that there are a lot of micro parts and probably parts in general in this hobby that are just out of stock from a lot of different shops. Uh, and another thing, again, a little reminder, we'll be doing another guessing game sort of giveaway here soon. I need to record that here in the next couple of days, edit that up, and I'll post it. A little fun thing to do where you can win a prize. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the section down below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.